Hey, <coughs> g'day, uh, Peter here. Uh, so I often fly from Brisbane through one of the changeover air flight uh, ports like Singapore or KL, um, and I've been using different airlines. Um, so I've used uh, Tiger and Jetstar and Air Asia, and I just wanted to take a moment to review my my thoughts on that without going into a comprehensive review as such but just you know this is an airport stopover I've got a few minutes so I'll, you know let you know uh, if you're traveling with the budget airlines which one's got pros and cons so um, one thing about um, Scoot was that Scoot actually gives you um, or they've been giving a 15 kilo carry-on and they don't weigh it um, so you turn up at the airport at the Gold Coast and um, and I'm um, checked through to um, uh, Hanoi, uh, oftentimes, and so, um, so Scoot never ever made me weigh the bags or anything. Uh, their service on the plane is pretty good. Um, the seat sizes are uh, about reasonable for the budget airlines in the economy class. Um, if you uh, go with Air Asia, they're about the same for the seat sizes and the service on the plane, but. Air Asia is no end of hassle at the check-in. Um, uh, for starters, if you're flying to to Vietnam, they don't tell you, but when you get to the airport at the Gold Coast, um, you actually need your visa for Vietnam in your hand. And so, if you go to their automatic turnstiles, it doesn't ever say in the email or the or the you know 24-hour pre-booking thing. So I've pre-checked and and got my boarding passes and whatever. Um, it doesn't say, um, but you still have to go to the counter. Um, because you have to show, they have to cite your your Vietnam visa before you leave the country, right? So, but every time I get to the the counter with Air Asia, um, they hassle me about bag weights. Now I know that the easy solution is to just be under the bag weights, and and that would you know seem reasonable to most people. But um, uh, but unfortunately. Um, uh, when I leave Hanoi to come back here, um, if you've got an Asian family, they always give you gifts when you're leaving, and they're always food or something that's contraband that you're going to get taken off you at the airport anyway, um, and a whole bunch of water for the trip, and you know, um, so it's all lovely. But um, uh, but when you get to the airport, uh, Air Asia just doesn't have any tolerance. Uh, you know, two pieces of luggage under seven kilos, um, like seven kilos for two pieces of luggage. You can't even, like a, a bag, you know, my suits, my suits would weigh more than that. You know, like, well, three kilos at least. And uh, and then your computer, there's another three kilos. So that's your, that's your carry on, you know. Seven kilos is ridiculous Air Asia, absolutely ridiculous. But it's not uncommon. So Air Asia does seven kilos, Jetstar does seven, I think. Um, um, but yeah, but back to Air Asia for a minute. Um, one of the funny things is at the Gold Coast Airport, you you go up to the check-in, you weigh your you carry on uh, like your your check baggage and whatever, and if that's over, they'll make you pull stuff out, right? So, um, and I'm always standing at the airport, you know, um, the the uh, courtesy bus from the hotels drop me off, and I'm standing at the airport going, well, what do I do with the extra staff and they're going well one of the staff members said oh well you, you can give it to me because it was chocolate so I was taken over to, to Asia to give to family because they're a lot cheaper in Australia chocolate so um, if you've got friends in Asia they'll want you to bring chocolate um, but anyway so I'm going well yeah I can give you the chocolate but I just bought it you know I'm probably not going to give it to you um, and the first time this happened to me I was quite puzzled because I was only um, uh, I was only uh, I think three kilos over, but they give you an allowance of 0.7 of a kilo. So I'm 2.3 kilos in total over before they'd let me on the plane anyway. So I had to take out two and a half kilos of chocolate. Right? So I take out two and a half kilos of chocolate out of my bag, um, and then they say, oh, what are you gonna do with that? And I go, oh, well, I'll, um, I'll take it outside and I'll give it to somebody that's arriving, because that's what I thought to start with. Right? Um, but then I walked away from the counter and I went, well, I've got the three kilos of chocolate in my hand, in this hand. I've got the carry-on in the other hand that, that you know, is under the seven kilos. Um, when I go through the airport to duty-free, I can buy anything I like duty-free and carry it onto the plane, you know. Um, and they, they almost never stop you. So, 
So now, when I go to an airport, I just bring with me one of my, my bags, um, either a duty-free one if I've got one, or, or just a normal one that looks a bit nicer, right? Like as if I've just bought something. And then, um, and then I just pull it out of my bag, put it into that bag, I walk back out through the airport doors, um, and then walk down a bit and walk it back in again and go through security. Um, and so far, I've done that, you know, half a dozen times and uh, with Air Asia and because um, they do have cheap flights, so that's why I book them. Um, <coughs> but, um, but, so, uh, so long as I can take the stuff out of my um, checked luggage and carry it on, and physically carrying it on sometimes difficult, but, but, uh, and long as I tell them at the counter that I'm going to throw it away, uh, they're happy, all good. Uh, they don't tag your bags or anything. Um, they say they weigh them at the, at the turnstiles on the way through, and they, they, you know, um, uh, normally have the same staff between downstairs and between upstairs, and so, <coughs> so you know, potentially, if you're walking through with the chocolates in your hand, the same staff member might go, "Oh, hey, actually, you can't take them on. I want those." So that's why I say, put it in a bag. Put it in a bag that looks like you've bought it from duty free, and then, then Bob's your uncle, um, and off you go. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So. Um, <clears throat> oh, just going to have a sip of wine actually. <sighs> oh, that's better. So, <clears throat> now the other thing is like Jetstar, I would never fly Jetstar again. Quite a short, but Jetstar um, on an on a international trip, you don't get any of the benefits of, of Qantas, you know, none of the up service stuff right uh, it's a budget airline but their seats are small just our seats i'm six foot two uh, my knees are, are, are jammed against the seat in front of me right so i'm wedged in and if you've got a big bloke beside you and i'm not that small a bloke either um, it makes for a really uncomfortable trip with Jetstar. So um, I'll, I'll never ever fly Jetstar again. Uh, next time I do this review, I'll be going through um, um, the Chinese uh, stopover. I forget the name of it. Oh no, no, actually it's going through Taiwan now. Um, but you're not allowed to call it Taiwan or something. But anyway, um, uh, uh, not to be political, um, but. Uh, flying China Airways, so it'll be good to, to do a review of China Airways um, and what they're like. Um, they're they're not a budget airline; like their tickets about seven hundred and fifty bucks for the return, which is which is a good deal, right? Um, to from Gold Coast to Hanoi, uh, or Brisbane to Hanoi for that one. Um, uh, but uh, but the ones that I've done that I've been mentioning in this review, uh, Scoot, Jetstar, Air Asia. I think I said Tiger, but I don't think Tiger flies internationally anyway. But um, but those ones there, <coughs> the pick of them really is um, Scoot uh, because you've got 15 kilos of carry on. But now that I've figured out that Air Asia, all I've got to do is bring the bag. Well, you know um, uh, that works too. And <coughs> and the funny thing was, I, Air Asia, I booked this flight actually on the way back. Um, I hadn't booked return luggage at all and so I turn up and it's over seven kilos oh well then you're gonna have to to you know um, buy buy a return luggage so it cost me 80 bucks for the bag um, but they wouldn't even sell me a 20 kilo bag uh, they only sell me a 15 kilo bag for return checked baggage 15 kilos for a checked bag return so of course my bag weighs 19 kilos which you know would normally be under um, and they wouldn't let me check it through. I had to take out, um, <laughs> well, weighed 18 and a bit, and so I had to take out three kilos of food <laughs> that I'd been given, um, and so I take it out, and same thing in Hanoi. What are you gonna do with it? Oh, well, I'll just go and give it to somebody in the, in the arrivals. Okay, you know, I'll walk away, put it in a bag, um, carry it on, nobody cares. So, um, <clears throat> so if that helps somebody, uh, I'm glad, um, and uh, and like I said, I wouldn't fly Jetstar, um, not 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 any chance in the world. And the other advantage with flying Air Asia <coughs> is that, like, um, 
uh, on the way back in KL, if you get to the 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 um, the uh, uh, departure lounge um, like early, so you get there about an hour and a half before when nobody's turned up yet, <clears throat> then you can often actually upgrade to the flatbed. Now, if you book the flatbed online, it's about a thousand dollars. But if you and if you book it at the at the you know the bookings desk, um, your check in, um, they normally want about six hundred bucks. But I found out that if you if you book it at the um, at the actual you know boarding lounge, um, I normally just rock up there a bit early, say hey, do you have any flat beds available? Um, oh mind you, now that I've said this and I put this on YouTube, everybody will be bloody doing this. I'll never get one. Um, <coughs> so anyway, you better like click. You know share comment and all of that stuff so then at least I can get some of the money back on YouTube ads or something I don't know um, but but I, I like to help people so hopefully this helps somebody um, because upgrading a, a budget airline like Air Asia to a flatbed makes it a first-class ticket um, and the return fare is normally about um, uh, normally about 300 Australian for me to upgrade upgrade from economy to to flatbed and the flatbed is awesome the only the only thing is you lose any meals or whatever you know again air has got some funny policies but um uh but the the flatbed uh thing in air asia is really good like it lays dead flat or pretty close to dead flat because uh, planes up on slight angle and um and I always have a, a top sleep um, flying back with their flatbeds, and and for three hundred bucks, uh, that makes it a six hundred dollar flight. Um, even Qantas, you know, wouldn't um, be able to offer me business class for that. And business class isn't even anywhere near as good as their flatbeds. So, um, so anyway, all right. Uh, I hope that all helps somebody. I'm probably rambling. That's probably all of this wine. But I, I get another glass of this to go. Right um, on my three glasses now it used to be unlimited but ever since i've been stopping off here it's been three glasses um, um after the first time so anyway <coughs> uh all right i'll catch you later bye uh, remember to like comment or share especially if you take up all my flatbeds <laughs>